Lynn Nibart from the Roost Company here taking your calls at 270-9933. Boy, you're coloring up the place today. Isn't it pretty? I know. I went outside and there were just all kinds of things available at the retail store. So, you know, it's a combination where you, if you let something die <laughs> because of too hot of conditions, you know, dianthus and pansies, this will tolerate cold. The bilissum will tolerate lots of cold also. And the pumpkins, of course. Now, remember, there's lots of traditional orange mm -hmm. pumpkins available. But if you want something that's a splash of color, this is a this spirally one I thought was really cool. And then, of course, Packers. Packers took, out, took those bears. <laughs> We've got all different kinds there you of. Go. These are, these are painted right at the, the Bruce Company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little kitty, or like I saw it almost looked like the news hound. Could be a news hound, you never know. <laughs> and Something. then I also have an aster behind that, and that's a perennial, so you, if you prefer that to mums, then you can put this in the ground and it'll come back every year. I love the color. Yes. All right, let's go to the phones. We'll start with Laura and Jefferson. Hi, Laura. Hi, Linda Hi. and Mark. Hi, what's your question? Okay, I have two questions, one of which is transplanting hickory trees that we have uh, in range from about two foot tall to ten foot and then the other question is pulp pots on blue spruce if you have to remove them or can you just take them off or on when you transplant them what are the survival rates with or without the pulp pot Laura what is a pulp pot I'm not sure is pulp, it pulp as in like a, it's almost like a biodegradable cardboard sure like a uh, paper pot. mache okay yeah all right yes well I guess that I've heard bit various thoughts on this if the root system is extensive enough or on that evergreen that it will stay together the trick is you don't want to be planting evergreens bare root necessarily at this time of the year so if you need it in place to keep the root system together definitely take the dot the bottom part of that off I've, I've heard that so otherwise it's going to act as a con it'll hold water too long but if there's a good root system inside of that, then cut it and remove it. As far as the, uh, the first question. Hickory. Oh, hickory. hickory. Oh, boy. Well, you know, that plant tends to develop, if they're in containers, if um, it's been um, root pruned so that you, it doesn't have, it tends to develop a strong uh, taproot of sorts and then um, transplanting it. And I don't know if, if now is the best time of the year or if spring might be better. But if you're going to be holding them, in uh, a greenhouse over winter? Is that where you've been? She's, no. She's gone. Darn, okay. Laura, why don't you give me a call at the Bruce Company and let's discuss this a little bit further. I have, I have more questions for you about the um, trees. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Jean in Arlington. Hi, Jean. Hi. I, we have like probably five, six hibiscus plants or bushes or whatever you want to call them. They're in pretty good sized pots outside. Uh -huh. So how do we take care of them for the winter? Because we were told not to plant them in the ground. Well, if they're hibiscus with with large flowers, yeah, then and they're they're basically uh, those are tropical plants, so you need to treat them as house plants. But if you have five or six of them, you may not have the room to just bring them in and keep them alive as house plants. So you may need to cut them back. But you and you can sort of have them go into semi dormancy, and but you will need to continue to water them. You don't stop watering them. It's not something that goes to com completely dormant. Make sure there's no bugs on them coming in. And the bugs are an issue. That's another reason to, to prune off the excess growth and check the undersides of those leaves because things can be mm -hmm. harboring underneath there. All right, Jolene in Madison. Hi, what's your question? Hi. Hi, what's your question? Um, yeah, I live on the third floor, and I want to know what, what type of container should I use to grow asparagus, or can I grow asparagus uh, out of the ground? No, Jolene, I think you're going to have to go to one of those. There's a lot of Dane County gardens where you can actually buy a plot. Now, you'll have to make sure that you can put something in the ground and make sure you get that plot every year because asparagus, you get it started, and you won't be able to harvest it. That's one where you would need a dedicated area of, of ground that you're going to plant it's that. It's not something you can do in, the, in the, an apartment. No. All right, Judy in Rock Springs. Hi, Judy. Hi, I was just wondering, do you have to dig up dahlia and gladiola bulbs? And if you do, how do you store them for the winter? Okay, both of those plants do need to be dug, and then the dahlias, you want to make sure that they don't, the bulbs don't dry out. Best to air dry it for a while after you dig them, get, knock off as much of the soil as possible, and then you'll want to store it in peat moss because you don't want them to get too dry. So, and see, earth, something where it has a higher humidity is, is going to be ideal. Gladiolas, you'll want to um, treat with an insecticide because they're very, very prone to um, carrying insects over winter. So those also should be carried someplace where they can have higher humidity, but in uh, mesh bags is a good way with gladiolas. A lot of work. <laughs> All right, we're out of time. If you're on the line, Linda will talk to you off the air. Good to see you again. Good see to you see next you. Monday. We'll be right back with a final check of your forecast.